I thank you for having me here and uh, thank you Zi Yang and the youth team for inviting me and today really is an honor for me to join the youth online service and to be together with all of you virtually. Now today I'm going to talk about the significance of prayer. It means that why prayer is important. Now in year 1990, there's a powerful satellite called Magellan. So in 19, 1990, uh, Magellan is sent by NASA to explore the planet, uh, planet Venus. So this high-tech satellite function well and transmitting space research data back to NASA. So but on the October 11, 1994, NASA deliberately sent Magellan which costs about 900 million USD and plunging it to a planet and where it burned to a crypt. Why? Why would NASA do that? Because Magellan was virtually out of power. So after circling the planet Venus more than 15,000 times, so the final experiment drained all its power and it no longer could transmit data. So without power, even the highest technology in the world is worthless. So when I think of this um, story, so I realize that in life, yeah, without power, without energy, we can, human being can be worthless. So likewise, as Christian, without the power of God in our lives, our effort can be in vain as we do the work of God, as we live our lives without the power of God. So that's why prayer is so important. And today we're going to talk about why prayer is so important. Two very simple and direct reasons. As we go on, come on, let's pray first before we start our message today. Let's pray. Father, we give thanks to you that we can gather virtually and to learn about prayer. Today we pray that you will bless us and give us a meaningful time and help us to understand prayer even more. Inspire us, challenge us, transform us so that we can be more like you. And we give thanks to you and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Let everybody say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Now, the first reason why we pray is prayer unleashes the power of God. As we know that, we heard a lot of messages about it and from the Bible, we we, we see many examples or many real stories that as we pray, the power of God is unleashed. Now, I like what uh, Reverend Hill says. He says this, No man is greater than his prayer life. The pastor who is not praying is playing. Wow, that's very serious. So the people who are not praying are straying. And the pulpit can be a shop window to display one's talent. And the prayer closet allows no showing off. I think he really points it out and to the door that prayer, it is so important in our lives. So friends, if we are not careful, we can be Magellan, like Magellan. Without battery, without power, our life actually is worthless. So without the power of God in our lives, no matter what we do, at times, our effort can go down to the drain. So prayer unleashes the power of God. I like this saying, it says this, there are many ways to work with God, but one way to work with God is through humble and contract prayer. Well, I like, I like this quote. It says there are many ways we are collaborating with God, but that's one way, important way, is through humble and contract prayer. It simply means that we humble ourselves, we come before God, and we pray because we know that God moves in power as we pray. Now, friends, Prayer is a gift that God has given us as Christians and believers. As a gift, we pray and God will answer our prayer and God moves through our prayer. That is a gift of God. And no doubt, no, like I said, mentioned earlier from the Bible, we do know that as we pray, God moves and God miracles can happen and great things can happen because people pray, people of God pray because that is, this is the gift that God has given us. Now I remember, you no, know, as a pastor, you if you were to ask me, actually I prefer, you know, personally, you know, I prefer studying the word of God or you know teach the word of God than to pray. If you ask me, to be frank, 
But I learned this hard lesson, you know, uh, in one of the camp, the youth camp that I spoke in. So I remember prior to the camp, I prepared well, you know, uh, I prepared all the props, I prepared, you know, how to connect with the crowd, and I prepared myself so well, you know, I, I was a full of confidence and said, wow, this will be a great camp because I'm so well prepared. So the first session, night time, I went in there, you know, I tried, I tried to tell a lot of jokes, tried to connect with the people. And by the way, do you know what? The first session in camp usually is, is the hardest because if you can, you cannot connect with them, oh, the other sessions will be so difficult. No, I tried my very best to connect with them. So, but no, my message is as though like hitting the ceiling and it bounced back. And I don't know why. And after the session, you know, I was so discouraged and I went back to the room and I started to pray. I said, God, what's wrong with me? Something is wrong. What happened? Why the message seems cannot get through? I don't understand God. Why? Then I realized one thing. God, like as though like God is showing me, he say, you know, Mancho, do you really pray for the service before you preach? Before even you were preparing for that? I was like, wow, that hit me hard. I realized that I didn't pray. I was just using my own effort, you know, trying to be nice, trying to be cool, you know, trying to connect with people. But I realized that I didn't prepare spiritually. So I prayed and I said, God, help me, forgive me. And I start to focus on prayer. So now, then the second session, morning, I waited everybody to go into the hall. Then, then you know what I did? I went to a corner and I remember that I kneeled down and I prayed. I said, God, help me without you. This preaching is just another message, meaningless. It's with your power, your conviction, lives will be touched. But thank God, you know, God really moved. I thank God for that. Now, that is a hard lesson for me to learn. That from there, I realized that power of God is unleashed as we pray. Because like I say, this is God's gift for you and me. That's why we pray. Unleashes the power of God. Now, more than just unleashing God's power in prayer. I find that the second reason is even more meaningful and more important. Now, the second reason is prayer brings us home to God. Prayer brings us home to God. As we pray, we go home. Prayer is so important to a human soul. Now, I remember one pastor say this. You know, I find that his teaching is quite interesting. He says, you know, when God first created mankind, we are first essentially a spiritual being, then only a physical being. That's our identity. That we are spiritual being, then only physical being. Our identity as God created us. But when sin came into the world through uh, Adam in Genesis 3, there is a reverse that took place. Our identity is like shift, a reverse. So we recognize us as a physical being first, then only a spiritual being. No wonder we find that you no know, our appetite for spiritual things is diminishing. We find that you know our appetite for physical things or material things is increasing. And because we find that because there's a reverse that took place in Genesis 3. So when I heard this pastor talk on this topic, I was like, wow, that's a very interesting thought. No wonder, you know, that we don't enjoy praying so much because prayer is engaging the spiritual aspect in our lives. But when the order took place, the reverse that took place in the life of people, that we focuses, we focus on the material things, then spiritual things next. That's why prayer brings us home. We didn't realize how important prayer in our lives because there was a reverse that took place back then. So now, thank God, God wants to remind us and God wants to do a deep work in our lives. As we pray, God brings us home to Him. Amen. God brings us home as we pray. That's why we can connect with God. That's why we can commune with God. We can sense God's presence and God will speak to us. It's very, very important. Or else, if not, our appetite will only for the material things. That's why we find that some of our friends, they focus in getting money, to become famous, 
to look for man's approval. Why? Because a reverse took place when sin entered to the world. That we recognize us not as a spiritual being first, as, but as a physical being. But now, when we pray, our identity is found. We realize that, wow, yeah, I'm created, God created us as first, essentially, a physical being, then only a physical, uh, a spiritual being first, then only a physical being. Amen? So, prayer brings us home. It's very important. Now, I, I, I like this quote. It says this, The significance of prayer is not just what it can do for you and me, for us, but who it will bring us back to. I like this. I think it's very meaningful. Most of the time that we thought that prayer could get us this, get us that. You know, we pray for a girlfriend, we pray for a boyfriend, we pray for a car, we pray for a good, we pray for a good result, we pray for the what. But oftentimes, we have neglected the aspect that as we pray, it brings us home. The significance of prayer is not just what it can do for us, but who it will bring us back to. Prayer brings us home, friends. When we pray, we are home with God. We find God. We find rest. We rediscover our identity in God because prayer is important to your soul and to my soul. Now, I think we also have to be very careful with this, that prayer is therefore not using God, mm -hmm. but finding God. Wow, I like that. Prayer is not using God, but finding God. It is not using God to get what we want, but finding God and to know Him. Think about this. Most of the time, our understanding of prayer stops at level one. The first aspect we shall talk about, it unleashes the power of God. That's why we pray. We pray for our exam. When we didn't study hard enough, we pray, you know, God will help us to pass our exam to get good, 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 good results, you know. It's like getting what we want. But oftentimes, we didn't realize that prayer is important to our soul. Because as we pray, we are home with God and prayer brings us home to draw close to God, to find Him, to depend on Him, to know Him. It is so important. Think about that. Think about that. Now, there's um, a very classic example in the Bible, a character, that I, I find that his life is actually very amazing and I learn a lot from his life. And, and as I think about prayer and I look at his life, I find that he, he, he really, uh, how to say, experienced these two aspects. He experienced that prayer unleashes God's power. Not only that, he also experienced it later in his life that prayer brings him home. Who is he? He's none other than the disciple of Jesus, Peter himself. Now, Peter with Jesus for about three years, you know, uh, following Jesus to do ministry. So he has the first experience or encounter the witness, the prayer life of Jesus. So definitely he realized that Jesus wakes up in the early in the morning, he prays. Then after that, he will teach, he will pray, he will do miracle, he will, he will, uh, after that, he will cast out demons, do a lot of uh, healing. And after that, before he sleeps, Jesus prays again. He find, Peter find that, you no, know, the routine of Jesus is like, just the routine, that's the routine of Jesus. Of course, of course, through the ministry of Jesus, Peter has a first-hand experience that prayer has power. Amazing. Because when he sees the ministry of Jesus, when Jesus prays, things just happen. Then, of course, not only that, God empowered the disciples to do likewise. In the Gospels, we see that they're empowered by God and they pray demons have to flee. And as they pray, you know, the, the sick got to be healed because that's the power of God. And like I said, mentioned earlier, is it is God's gift for the disciples and for you and me to do the work of God. That's why the power of God is there, is unleashed. So Peter understands when he prays, something will happen. When Jesus prays, something will happen. When other disciples pray, something will happen because that is the power of God is so evident in the lives of the disciples and even the life of Jesus. But that's something that Peter didn't really understand. Peter did, never really understood back then, you know, that even though when Jesus is not doing ministry, Jesus still prays. He will still go to the wilderness and pray, even though he's not doing ministry. 
the moment that when Jesus has free time, he will spend time to talk to God the Father. I believe that that's one aspect that maybe Peter didn't really get it. He said, Jesus, why? You're not doing ministry now. You don't need to pray because there's no demon to be cast. Now, there's no uh, sick to be healed. Why you no pray? But Jesus prays. Something that he noticed, but I think he didn't quite really understand back then. But he will only understand this when the crisis hit them. So what's the crisis then? So that's the crisis. It's actually based on the Gospel of Luke in actually Luke chapter 23 onwards. Yeah, It's talking about the, 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 the arrestment of Jesus and the disciples that betray Jesus and all. That's the main crisis of the life of disciples because all this while, you know, they, they, they are very happy, you know, so excited going out with Jesus because you can see like people following Jesus, you know, the, what, they have all the fame and all the glory, you know. But when the crisis really hit them, something is transforming eternally. Now, this, uh, in Luke chapter 22, so when Jesus was having a, a the last supper with disciples, Jesus, Jesus tells the disciples, say, you know what, I'm going to die. Three days later, I will be resurrected. And you all, the disciples, will desert me, will leave me alone. Of course, Peter, you know, being Peter, he said, no, Jesus, I will, not, uh, I will not abandon you. No matter what, if I die, I will not abandon you. But prior to that, prior to that conversation, Jesus says this in Luke chapter 21, 36. Jesus says this, Be always on the watch. Then pray and pray. Other words, be alert and pray. So prior to that crisis that Jesus is going to be betrayed and to be crucified, Jesus already reminded the disciples, Hey guys, hey disciples, you've got to be watchful, be alert and pray always because it's important to your soul. He said, be watchful and pray. And now, you, if you have your Bible, can you turn with me to Luke chapter 22, 31 to 32. Luke chapter 22, 31 to 32. It's a very interesting a, uh, a perspective in this, okay? So Luke chapter 22, 31 to 32. It's actually a conversation between Jesus and uh, Simon Peter, okay? Luke chapter 22, 31 to 32. Found it? All right. So, all right. Verse 31 says this, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sieve each of you like wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sieve each of you. But Jesus says, I pray for you all so that your faith will not fail and when you have repented, come back and strengthen your brother. Now, think about this, okay? Think about this. Prayer. Luke chapter 21, 39, talk about be watchful and pray. Pray. Now, in Luke 22, 31, 32, Jesus also said, pray. Correct? Am I right? Now, pause and think for a moment. Jesus could have told Simon Peter. He could have said that, my version, okay. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked me of you to save you. But I say no to Satan. I decline. I rejected his permission. No, I mean, I rejected his request. I won't allow him to do that. I tell Satan, Satan, do not lay your hand on my disciples. No, stop, full stop, gautim, jabut. No, Jesus could have said that. Correct or not? It's simple, it's direct, it's practical. But from human perspective, we think that it's practical. Maybe I believe, you know, not just maybe, but in God's perspective, Simon Peter has to go through that brokenness. That's why Jesus says, Simon, even though Satan asked me of you, but I pray for you. Take courage. Pray. I pray for you that your faith will not be shaken and after you have repented, restoration takes place and you will come back and strengthen your brothers. And this is the journey you have to go through. No, because Jesus understands this, that God's will for Simon is to strengthen the brothers. 
not just only understand that prayers has so much power, unleashes the power of God, but Jesus is also teaching Simon Peter, Simon Peter, when you have fallen, when negative thoughts overwhelm you, when you are so ashamed of your own self, Simon, when you think that, you know, you have denied your master and you are actually in your own words, be alert and pray because prayer will bring you home to God. And when he is home with God, there's peace, there's restoration, there is strength, there's hope, there's faith, there's love. That's why just now I mentioned earlier, you know, Simon could never really understand back then, you know, why Jesus, no ministry, no need to pray, what for what? I think after this brokenness, he realized that in his darkest valley or lowest point of his life, he prays and the comfort of God, the strength of God is upon him. He realized that he has to depend on God because prayer brings him home. Again, remember the identity, the spiritual being first, the physical being, he, now he realized that we are all spiritual beings as we pray, God speaks to us, we experience God's presence. Now, after the restoration, he did three times denied Jesus, Jesus restored him. He, I believe, you know, in Acts, of course, we, we look at the book of Acts, God used him to speak to thousands and through, through, through his ministry, Peter's ministry, many people come to know the Lord. You know, his life is transformed from a coward to someone who is so courageous to speak boldly, even not afraid to die for Jesus. Why? Because something has changed internally. Because he now he understands that prayer doesn't only unleash the power of God, and prayer brings him home to God. Despite of his brokenness, despite of his failure, despite of all the shame, all the hatred from other disciples or other people, prayer brings him home. He once again experiences God's love, God's power. Now let me close with this story. One day, oh, before I go to the story, you know, <laughs> I've forgotten this. That's why, you know, he learned his lesson so well. And in 1 Peter 4, 7, he says this, The end of things is near, but therefore be alert and be sober, so that you may, be, you may pray. Does this sound familiar? 1 Peter, he, he wrote this, 4, 7. He realized how important prayer is. He said, be alert. Remember Jesus, what Jesus says in Luke chapter 21? Be alert and pray. And look at what Peter wrote here. First Peter 4, 7. <laughs> the things, the, the end of the things is near. Therefore, be alert and pray. He learned the significance of prayer. Not just only unleashing God's power, but more than that, it brings Peter home. It brings you home. It brings me home as we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, closing. All right. So there's this uh, boy, go one day, a boy, ask the father, he said, Daddy, Daddy, how big God is? Now it's a tough question, of course. So then the father replied, Son, how big God is, is actually depending on you, the father replied. So then the father looked at the sky. So happened there's a plane that passed by. Then he asked the son, Son, how big is the plane? Then the boy replied, Daddy, I barely see the plane because it is so small, you know, it's in the sky. Then after that, the father takes the son to a nearby airport. So right in front of the big airplane. Now, the father asks the son again, Son, so how big is the airplane? Then the son replies, Wow, Daddy, the airplane is so big, it's so big. Then finally, the father explained to the son. The son, you asked me the question, how big is God? So then the father says, God, size, the bigness of God, is it depending on the distance you are with Him. The closer you are to God, 
the bigger he is to you. The closer we are to God, the bigger he is to us. So, prayer unleashes God's power for sure. But most importantly, prayer brings us home because as we draw near to God, we will know that the God that we serve, we worship, is a big and awesome God. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Come, let's pray. Let's pray as we end. God, we give thanks to you today that we can learn about prayer from Peter's life, his brokenness, his journey. But we learn that God, through prayer, your power is unleashed. And not just only unleashing your power, God, but we realize that as we pray, we are home with you. We find you, we know you, we experience you, we are connected with you, O oh God. God, as we end our service today, I pray that you will bless all my brothers and sisters. Your word says that as we, as we draw near to you, God, you will draw near to us. God, I pray that you will draw near to us because, Lord, we truly need you. Father, once again, we give thanks to you for your love for us. As we pray, we know that you are faithful. You always hear our prayer. We give thanks to you for that. Hallelujah. Father, once again, bless us. Be with us. We give thanks. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. And everybody say, come on. Amen. 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 All right. So thank you. I'm so grateful that I can you know, um, be here online virtually before of you. So take care. God bless you. Hope to see you all very, very, very soon. Okay. Bye-bye.